Welcome back to John's Films, your home for DaVinci Resolve benchmarks, tips, tricks, and technology I think you need to know. Today what we're taking a look at is Neil Cook's suggestion. He said, look, I love the benchmarks. Thanks for doing a 3080, 3090, but what would really help us is if you showed us side by side what they look like in playback. And I thought, you're right, and I also forgot to put the render times in the last video. So, I'm going to rerun it with DaVinci Resolve 17.3.1, and we're going to get some benchmarks out of this business. Let's go. First up, let's take a look at the base config. It's an AMD Ryzen 5950X 16-core 32-thread processor of 32 gigabytes of memory. I'm running at 2666. It's actually DDR4000, but we're going to keep it here so that we can be consistent between all platforms. And here we've got a GPU of an RTX 3090. I'll later swap an RTX 3080 in. We're on my custom-built benchmark, and the benchmark has some base footage with LUTs that slide in and get applied. This one is 420 10-bit H.265 off a Sony A7S 3 Here you can see some stabilized footage. It was 120 frames per second. Here's drone footage. This is a DJI Mavic 2 Pro. And as we move further through the benchmark, you'll notice I've added more complex grades. That's just an inversion. Some noise reduction, which starts to hit on those CUDA cores. And then here we really bring the pain with optical flow slow motion. Again, CUDA core. And this uses the neural engine in DaVinci Resolve, which leverages the tensor cores inside the NVIDIA GPU. Finally, we finish it off with a custom fusion setup. First, I use the included autumn leaves. And then I built a custom rendered 3D scene. You can even see as I'm walking you through this, the pain that this optical flow slow motion puts on 3090, which means we'd expect the same of the 3080. Here we go with the custom 3D world I built. This is particle system with three dimensions to it. As always, I've turned off the render cache, the fusion memory cache, and the proxy so that nothing is helping. It is straight hardware rendering here, and we'll make it happen. 3090 versus 3080, here we go. Now, side by side, the RTX 3090 in the top left, the RTX 3080 in the bottom right, you can see there's very little difference as they process this Sony A7S III footage. Going through, it was 120 frames per second, slowed down at 20%. Neither of them took a particular lead in that. This is DJI Mavic 2 Pro footage. Here again, <laughs> not much difference. Applying the LUTs is not that much strain on either of these cards. You can see I was monitoring that on the side. Here we go with the CPU-based rendering of the 422 footage, and still that didn't take it away because they were using the same CPU. Notice neither of them were able to render the optical flow slow-mo, and here in Fusion we should not see much difference, potentially with the particles. So that's the two systems here, and sure enough the leaves caught the 3080 up just a little bit longer, but really there's no difference. Here's our benchmarks, and you can see the RTX 3090 was about a minute and a half faster when you're looking at the native render, but across all of the NVENC enabled rendering, not much of a difference. Well, there you have it. Now we know if a 3080 or a 3090 is worth your money. You can see the difference. It's there, but it's not exactly a rock my world different. So if you're making a choice, let me know in the comments, which one would you buy, the 3090 or the 3080? Maybe the memory's worth it for you, but uh, otherwise I think the 3080 is a heck of a deal if you can get it for MSRP. Thanks for watching as always. Subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. We got a lot more videos coming and have a great day.